listen, I get that being an artist on social media is really hard. It can be really exhausting. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to learn. But I keep seeing artists make these really common mistakes all of the time that I think are really holding them back, that are really holding you back. And so today, while I work on these sketchbook spreads, I want to chat about the four most common mistakes that I see artists making on social media. And I also really want to thank New Masters Academy for sponsoring this video. So the first really common mistake that I see artists making all of the time is the idea that you need to post 24 seven on social media, like every single day. And wow, that could not be further from the truth. I don't know what platforms like Instagram and TikTok, I don't post there, but like posting every single day, girl, that has got to be just like exhausting. There is no world where you should ever be posting every single day on social media, like consistently. That sounds like a nightmare. The whole purpose of consistency, the reason why I think it is so important as a concept, especially when you were getting started, is because at first you need to build up like content creation and filming yourself and like just the act of doing all of the stuff. You need to get used to that. It needs to become a habit, part of your routine as an artist every single week. But you shouldn't be posting all the time. The purpose of consistency, which personally I recommend like once a week, is to get you in the habit of creating, to get you past that stage where like you're just figuring stuff out and you hate literally everything that you're making as fast as possible. You wanna get over that step. You wanna overcome all of those obstacles that you were going to be encountering the first couple of months that you were going to be making stuff. But once you know how to make good content, once you've overcome those obstacles, you don't have to post every single week anymore. You definitely don't have to post every single day. Oh my God, I mean, I, just, I can't get over how much of a nightmare that sounds like. The purpose of consistency is to get you over that initial phase. But once you know what you're doing, you can dial that back. Like, yes, you should be posting on some kind of schedule, but that doesn't have to be every single week. That could be every other week. It could be like every couple of months. It could be once a month. I follow creators that only post a couple of times a year and their videos are hours long and they're masterpieces and their business model doesn't rely on them having to post all of the time. They post a couple of times a year with some really impactful stuff and the rest of the time they rely on crowdfunding like Patreon, Discord memberships, whatever, like Twitch streams every so often, or they have like one really big sale of their art every single year and that funds their entire lifestyle. Like if it's big enough, you don't have to post all of the time. What you really need to have is just some kind of schedule, some kind of schedule that works for you where you can really get into the habit of making stuff and then putting it out there. Just having that schedule is the important part, not necessarily the frequency. Personally, I tend to post about four times a month or maybe every other week on this channel because that's what I like to do. Like that is what is feasible for me. I enjoy getting in the habit of creating. And if I take too much time off, I kind of tend to like forget how to speak to the camera or like how to tell a good story, how to script a good video. And so for me, it's just like, I like posting every single week. Posting every single week keeps me focused. It keeps me engaged. But every so often I have stuff come up or I'm traveling or I'm moving across the country. That's happened so many times for some reason. And I have to take that time off. And yeah, when I want to go back into it, it can be a little bit of an uphill battle to get that habit going again. But like you, I my business does not suffer from me taking those breaks. I've designed it in such a way that I can take that time off and that is extremely valuable. So don't ever let anyone convince you that you have to be posting all of the time. No. If you really think that you have to be posting consistently, what you should really be doing is batch filming your content. Turn one painting into like three different reels or three different YouTube shorts and a, and a full length YouTube video and an email newsletter, right? Figure out how to turn one piece of art into multiple pieces of content or batch film educational videos like this one or reels or whatever. Do like, I don't know, like two or three a day for a couple of days. And then if you're posting two times a week, you have content for 
maybe the next month and a half if you're strategic about it. You don't have to post every single day. That sounds extremely terrible and it will probably burn you out. And I don't want to see that. I really don't. I think posting every single day is very often a mistake. Even creators like Casey Neistat, who I think posted every single day um, on YouTube, like full length vlogs for about five years, he has talked about how instrumental that was for building his following, yes, but how it took so much work and his relationships with his wife and his kids suffered because of that project of posting every single day and that he would never do that again. And that the time for doing that on YouTube, like for growth has just ended. You just don't do that anymore. It's not a thing that you need to do or even should do to succeed online. It's a mistake that I see people making all the time that they have to post a lot. And that is just not true. Instead of like quantity, focus on quality, focus on making content that's impactful, that matters, that tells a story or provides value. The second mistake that I see creatives making all of the time on social media is just like looking for a way to beat the algorithm, some kind of hack, some kind of like secret tip that will let you bypass the, I don't know, the gatekeepers of the platform and like I don't know. You know what I mean? Like that that kind of secret. That kind of secret If it does exist, it won't exist for very long, and it's just not worth it. There is no shortcut to success. What you need to do is to learn how to make really high quality, engaging content that people care about. There is no shortcut to doing that. You have to go the long way. Things like tagging other users, adding in a million hashtags, or like laser focusing on what specific category your video is on YouTube, It's exhausting and it's not going to work the way that you think it will. Tags are a really great example here on YouTube. YouTube has talked about at length how completely irrelevant and unimportant tags are. Unless your keywords that you're trying to rank for are commonly misspelled and that's what you're adding into your tags, like don't even worry about tags. I use the exact same tags for every single one of my videos and I have for months and it impacts literally nothing. No part of my video or its performance is ever impacted by tags. Entire companies are based on the premise of tags mattering and they are lying to you. Tags do not matter. They are completely irrelevant. This idea of being able to somehow game the algorithm with some secret hidden metric or trying to do like some weird thing, it's never going to work. If you want to know how to succeed on social media, I will tell you. Like, this is all of the stuff that I've learned right here, right now, okay? You want to hear it? Let's go. The way that you grow on social media, first, you need to get the basics figured out, right? You need to learn how to record audio, light a video correctly, like use the autofocus on your camera, all of that stuff. Once you understand the absolute very basics, you need to figure out who you are making content for, your target audience, like who are you trying to reach with the stuff that you're putting out there? And once you have that figured out, you need to provide value. Value can be provided in a variety of ways. The first one is kind of obvious and it's to tell a meaningful story, like make it emotionally impactful. Is there some deep connection that you hold to your artwork or to your reference photo? Every Pixar movie like ever made comes to mind as a great example of a piece of media and a piece of art that tells a really meaningful, impactful story. It doesn't have to be a feature length film, mind you, but how can you make someone care? How can you pull on their heartstrings and really just like tell a really gripping story? Again, channels like Casey Neistat come to mind here. Casey Neistat is great at telling a story, at pulling you in, just giving you that hook and taking you along in his day, but it's not a feature length film. It's not like a Pixar quality animation. It's just very simple storytelling, but somehow that resonates with his audience time after time. Try and brainstorm ways that you can make that work for your audience, and I guarantee that will take you so much farther than like worrying about tags or whatever ever will. The next way you can provide value is to be entertaining. Channels like Mr. Beast and Emma Chamberlain exist on like two ends of this spectrum, right? One is like super over the top. The other is very down to earth, but they're both 
really entertaining. People care about them and their days or like the weird, crazy thing that they're doing next. Art channels here on YouTube like Gox Art, Lee Ellickson and Furry Little Peach are great examples of creators who are consistently entertaining and provide value that way. Either their stuff is just like so good you can't look away or their personalities really pull you in. They're like a little internet friend. Like you care about them. It's fun. It's cute. It's like a little parasocial friendship that you have going on. That's nice. People want to be comforted and to not feel so alone. How can you help them do that? And the last main way to provide value on social media is maybe the most obvious one. It's to be educational. Teach someone something, right? Either pull back the curtain on a lifestyle they're interested in, like being a full-time artist, or literally teach them something, like a new technique of, I don't know, like how to tie your shoes or how to use oil paints, how to clean your brushes, all of that kind of stuff. Education can be done in lots of ways and it's a really valuable, reliable way to grow on social media. There is a reason that Google owns YouTube. It's because YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. People search things on YouTube all of the time. I learn new things on TikTok like every single day, okay? I love educational platforms and pages on TikTok. It's so much fun to learn new things about archeology, span art history, and art techniques themselves. My favorite channels here on YouTube that are like that are Chelsea Lang and Mumi Moo Illustration. They're really educational, but they occupy two very different spaces in the art community and they have very different styles of teaching things, but both are extremely valid approaches to making good content. And speaking of education, a big part of success online is actually developing your skills as an artist. You should aim to be so good they couldn't possibly ignore you. I took a couple of art classes in college, but I do not have a degree in art. I am a political science major through and through. And so I've been using the sponsor of this week's video, New Masters Academy, for over two years to learn art at home. They have amazing classes and they are sponsoring this channel for the very first time this month. So I wanna take a minute and tell you a little bit about them and also just say thank you because this is really amazing and I am so, so grateful. New Masters Academy is the ultimate destination for artists looking to improve their understanding of the art fundamentals. I have been recommending them to my artist friends for years because I truly believe it's the best place to learn art online. Their instructors are hand-picked and are some of the most talented and world-renowned artists alive today. With over 2,500 hours of video course content, reference photos, live coaching, a Discord community, and a step-by-step -step roadmap, guiding you through their entire curriculum, depending on the kind of art that you wanna make, it is a one-stop shop for becoming the artist that you've always dreamed of. The paintings that I've been working on throughout this video are quick studies of paintings by the American Impressionist Emil Gruppi. Emil Gruppi was a painter that traveled all around New England and I was introduced to his work through an NMA class designing your landscape painting by an amazing instructor, Stapleton Kearns. These classes are so valuable. They're so varied and informative. They're shot really professionally, but besides all of that, besides just the amazing techniques that you'll learn, they also bring in really interesting elements of art history to put the lessons into more context. Every class is a little bit different and I love that about NMA. They really allow the instructor, the artist on display to really shine and tailor the class to their own interests and teaching style. I've been taking classes at New Masters Academy long before I reached out to see if they were interested in sponsoring the channel. I genuinely think that it's worth the cost of membership. And if you're interested in learning more, please check out the link in the description and thank you so much again to NMA for sponsoring this video. So the third mistake that I see artists making all of the time when it comes to social media is to treat YouTube or Instagram or whatever, the algorithm in general, like a person to anthropomorphize it. So if you are blaming your lack of success on social media to the algorithm and pushing the blame there, I think you are doing yourself and your art an extreme disservice. I know this is gonna sound mean and harsh, but I really genuinely mean it in a constructive way, okay? I guarantee that most likely the reason you are not growing is because of something that you are doing wrong or not doing at all. I guarantee there is something you could improve about your content. There is absolutely no way that you are doing everything right. I promise. I, I literally promise. Like. 
I can think of at least a dozen things that I would like to improve about my content right now. And whenever a video doesn't do well, I don't blame the algorithm. I blame myself. I think of ways that I could have improved that video, that I could have made it better. Maybe the topic was wrong. Maybe, I don't know, it didn't have the right title or the thumbnail was bad. There are so many things that affect a performance of a video or a piece of social media content that are under your control, okay? The point of blaming yourself and not the algorithm for your lack of success online is not because that's like always the truth necessarily. Like sometimes, yeah, the algorithm might suppress your content for whatever reason. That is not a thing that you have control over. Why even, why even consider that as an option? Instead of focusing on things that you can't control, focus on what you can control. Try and literally make your content so good they couldn't possibly ignore you. I think often, anthropomorphizing social media platforms or like larger structures like this is just not valuable. And in the very few cases where it is actually the platform's fault, it's still actually not that helpful. Like YouTube has a vested financial interest in creators on its platform succeeding. They want you to succeed. That is how they make money. And there isn't like some guy in a server room pulling a lever, like increasing impressions or views on your channel. That's just not how the platform works. If you are not succeeding, you need to have a really hard conversation with yourself about whether you're making good quality content, whether the topics on your channel or on your TikTok, or your Instagram are resonating with people. Are you jumping on trends? Are you filming everything the way that you could? And if you really are doing everything right, are you posting at all? I mean, consistency is important. Again, you don't have to post 24 seven, but some kind of schedule is really key here. And if you are posting consistently, have you been patient? Like, have you been posting for more than a couple of months? Sometimes I get comments from people on this channel asking like, hey, can you look at my channel? Like I'm doing everything right, but I'm not growing. And they've posted like two times and it's like bestie, you just gotta keep going, you gotta wait. I posted like, I don't know, like 60 videos before I ever reached a thousand subscribers. Like it takes a long time. And if you're doing everything right and you're continually improving time after time, then it really is usually just a matter of time. Consistently improving yourself, making sure that you are so good they cannot possibly ignore you. And then just waiting is, in my experience at least, and all the people that I've talked to, a very reliable method for success. And the last mistake that I see artists making on social media all of the time is that they think they need it, like at all. And the truth is, you really don't need social media to succeed as an artist. You really don't, like it's just not that necessary. If you're sick and tired of posting, if you think that you are genuinely not getting any returns, you hate your life, you hate doing this, you can't stand TikTok, and making a YouTube video like just gives you a panic attack, then stop. You, you don't need it, I promise. It's not that necessary. There are plenty of ways that you can succeed as an artist without social media. I know, I know. You're about to comment literally how. <laughs> what ways, Kelsey, reveal your secrets? And here's the thing. I feel like artists like me and other art YouTubers really like skew people's perception of what an art career ought to be, okay? This is just one way of doing things. There are so many other creative paths out there, like the film, gaming, animation, and advertising industries for one. You could go the fine art route and go in galleries for another. You could teach at a university level or literally art any, any way that you want to. There are so many ways that you can make art your job without having to post and have a large following on social media, okay? The world is a really big place. And there is no one way to make art your job. There's no one path period. And that's part of why it's so awesome and magical. Like the fact that it's so customizable. And that's also a part of why it's really hard sometimes that there is no path. You have to figure out what works best for you. I make videos like this because I like it. I enjoy it. Like personally, I just got 
these vintage lenses from Japan off of eBay and they were so cheap, but they're like 50 years old and I am so, so excited about them. And like that to me, like filming and editing and like all of that stuff, that's an extension of my creative practice. I love thinking about editing and scripting and storytelling and strategy. It just like, it gets me fired up. I'm really excited about it. I love it as much as I love art. It's become an extension of my craft. It's just really important to me now. I, I like doing it. And if you don't like doing it, that's fine, that's okay. There are so many creative nine to five jobs out there that do not require you to post all the time on social media. People like Jeremy Vickery used to work at Pixar and on shows like Westworld and movies like The Incredibles and Ratatouille before he decided to start posting on YouTube. He had a long and illustrious career in film before he ever even touched YouTube. And artists like Adam Duff worked in gaming and film and animation before he ever turned to YouTube and started teaching online. There are so many ways that you can make this work without needing social media. And hopefully, if you still do wanna go that route, now you have a better head on your shoulders and some misconceptions cleared up because genuinely these are mistakes that I see artists making all of the time and it really bothers me because they are so easy to fix and I think having those misconceptions out of the way will really benefit your mindset and the results that you get from the stuff that you put out there. I want to thank New Meshes Academy again for sponsoring this channel. That really means a lot to me. I, to my knowledge, am the first influencer they've ever sponsored on YouTube. Um, this deal has been in progress for months and months and months, so please go check them out. I have been a big fan of them for a long time, and if you are interested in seeing more content just like this, consider any of the stuff on your screen right now. I loved these sketchbook spreads. They were a great time, and I hope to see you in the next videos. All right, bye.